July 2020, and lockdown restrictions in the UK are easing. Pubs, restaurants and non-essential retail in England are open again, but there are still very real concerns about NHS capacity, so I'm heading out to enjoy a low-risk ride on the Osprey Trail at Kielder in Northumberland. Today I'm in a pretty remote part of Northumberland, making my way to Kielder's Osprey Trail where I'll be taking a relaxed ride around its mix of forest roads and uncomplicated single track. Before we get to that, this channel's all about mountain biking, so if you are too, please consider subscribing. If you do, please also click the bell icon and you'll be one of the first to know about new Mentford Ascent videos when they're uploaded. If you're new to mountain biking, or introducing someone to mountain biking for the first time, a trail like this one is a great place to begin. The Osprey Trail is a blue grade trail of moderate difficulty, meaning it's suitable for people with basic off-road riding skills. It begins at Kielder Castle, meandering out into the surrounding forest, and eventually back again. Straight out of the gate, you'll find yourself on a single track climb. Watch out for stray walkers in this area. Here, a local ranger is herding a flock back to the footpath with some highly trained people dogs. At the end of the single track, it's just a short ride on forest roads to the next section, which is called Spooky Well. Spooky Well isn't really a climb or a descent. Instead, it's just a pleasant amble through the trees. Overall, I find this section to be really enjoyable, but I do have one criticism, and that's about the width of the trail. I would expect a trail aimed at novice riders to allow a little more room for manoeuvre, but this is actually quite narrow. If you are coming here as a beginner, my advice would be to look as far down the trail as you can when you're riding, and that'll help you to stay on the right line. Eventually, the trail returns us to the Forest Drive, around a kilometre from where we left it. I like this trail, so I'm not trying to be negative, but the next section is pretty uninspiring from a riding point of view. For the next four or five kilometres, it's all forest roads. That said, they are forest roads that steer you through a beautiful, remote area, so all's not lost. We also start to gain a little elevation here, which bodes well for the more entertaining second half of the trail. At Hill 361, the climb leaves the road and becomes single track. It's not all uphill, there are a few spots where you can gather some speed, but it's not until you reach Ricky's run that the ascent eases. Here, the forest floor undulates, so there are some faster sections where you can freewheel, but there are also some climbs too. Regardless, it's a nice change from the climb that came before it. This section draws to a close, we emerge from the trees to a clear felled area. The views from the open hillside are a world away from the enclosed trail that we've just left behind us, but it's short lived. After a fleeting time in the open, we're swallowed by the trees again, only to find our way onto a long forest road descent. It's a shame to lose so much elevation here so quickly, and I can't help thinking that an opportunity to build some quality flowing single track has been overlooked. Further down the road, we arrive at Cheese Syke. This begins as a climb, but after a while the gradient turns and we finally start to win some easy speed. That speed carries us to Boggle Burn, a fast, twisting section that's always a little flash of fun.
Beyond Boggleburn, we're back on the fire road, but only for a short while, until we reach Farms Bridge. This starts off with a long straight descent, which lets you pick up a lot of speed. Beyond that, the hillside steepens and the trail begins to weave back and forth between the trees as it makes its way down to a burn and a narrow timber bridge. Farms Bridge leads us directly to a short, sharp climb called Take 5. It's at the top of that climb that we can relax a little and dive into Squirrel Nut Pines, the last section of single track before we reach Kielder's Lakeside Way. Like all trails, Squirrel Nut Pines has its ups and downs, but there are certainly enough downs to make you crack a smile. It's easy to gain speed, and the lack of berms doesn't stop you from enjoying it either. As soon as we hit the lakeside way, we hit another climb, but off the back of it, we can pick up the pace. The lakeside way is well known for its numerous art installations, and we've got the chance to visit one of the more popular ones on the way back to the trailhead. We could follow the lakeside way all the way back to Kielder village, but instead we're going to head back into the forest and make one last climb up to the Osprey Chick Trail. This final section of single track will serve up one last descent and deliver us straight back to the village and back to the car.
Final thought, I really like this trail. It's not technically challenging, but it is a nice change of pace, especially if you're easing back into riding or new to mountain biking. However, if you're looking for something more technical, you'd be better off looking at one of Keeler's red or black trails. Tiger, easy tiger. What a well, that was a bit of a letdown, but luckily we're only a short walk from the car. It's bigger than that. On the bright side, it did inspire me to make this pro level tubeless tire inflator. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you do, don't forget to click the bell icon so you can be one of the first to know about new videos when they're released. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please also give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.